The RAF is no stranger to special aircraft, from the majestic Spitfire to the elegant Lancaster. But one aircraft from their roster from the Second World War stands out as particularly special for being, if one thing above all, daring. Daring because it was built with a very specific mission goal in mind, and deviated from the normal doctrine of the time to accomplish it, and later mission goals, and, coincidentally, for many of the daring missions it would accomplish in its very active and glorious service life. The de Havilland Mosquito, also known as the Wooden Wonder for its primary material being timber, is perhaps one of the most famous twin-engine aircraft to ever serve in the RAF during World War II. As its origin is a mired and complicated subject too long to fully fit into a five-minute guide, it shall be summarized below, so do know that there are many details I am skipping or glossing over. The short gist of its beginning is that de Havilland had made quite a name of itself building fast race aircraft using advanced construction technique during the interwar period with one notable example being the DH-88 Comet, which would have its lessons applied to the Mosquito later on down the line. When the British Air Ministry put forth a requisition for a new bomber in 1936, they had hoped for a medium bomber, but would end up with the failure of the Avro Manchester and the somewhat more successful, if mediocre, Hanley Page Halifax. That was more of a heavy bomber cosplaying the part, being powered by four engines instead of the expected two. In 1937, George Volkirk, Chief designer of Hadley Page put forth the idea for a radically different bomber concept, one that forego defensive armament completely to focus on speed. This concept was seen with skepticism, as it was thought impossible to build a bomber fast enough to outrun fighters for more than a year or two before the fighters became fast enough to catch up again. But de Havilland thought otherwise. After some initial testing with two other aircraft, de Havilland settled on the design ethos that would culminate into the Mosquito. After proofs of concept and mock models, E-0234, the first prototype, would begin construction. It would, however, take several years before the prototype was finished and allowed to fly, as the fall of France, evacuation from Dunkirk, and Battle of Britain saw de Havilland being forced to devote resources to existing aircraft production rather than trying to build something new, as well as several internal debates about whether or not the new design would be worth anything. Several times, even up until now, the project had been threatened and actually cancelled, but de Havilland simply kept working on it out of sheer tenacity, using bargains, gambles, and lofty promises to keep it alive. It would be because of these promises and gambles that the Mosquito became more than a simple bomber, but a truly modern multi-role platform. E-0234 would finish construction and then take its maiden flight in late 1940. After some aerodynamic flaws were fixed, the Mosquito proved to be an exceptionally pleasant aircraft to fly, and crushed any skepticism out of the water after it easily outran Spitfires in trial runs. It would enter service in late 1941 and fill bomber, fighter, night fighter, strike fighter, torpedo bomber, and photo reconnaissance roles throughout a multitude of variants. In general, the performance of the Mosquito was superb, as its emphasis on speed and maneuverability allowed it to flex into its other roles quite comfortably, such as some other aircraft we have covered before. This elegant balance of performance would also lead it to be the go-to option for many daring special operations that would put the Mosquito in the history books. A few select examples of these operations include bombings on Gestapo headquarters at roof height altitudes, military intelligence building strikes with extreme precision, and perhaps the most ludicrous, Operation Jericho, which involved freeing prisoners of war using an airstrike. As crazy as that idea sounds, the Mosquito made it work. Another famous example of these types of daring raids can be found on January 30th of 1943, when Mosquitoes knocked out the Berlin broadcasting station while Hermann Goering was delivering a speech cementing the 10th anniversary of Hitler's rise to power, causing the speech to be ruined as it was taken off the air. The next time such a move was emulated was in 1991 during the commencement of Operation Desert Storm. Mosquitoes performed in their roles with remarkable capability, and with British avionics technology going into overdrive, the likes of Oboe, Guy, and other similarly advanced packages turned the Mosquito from a painful thorn in the side of the Third Reich into the monument of all their fears and jealousy amalgamated into one aircraft. This jealousy even manifested in Air Reich's Marshal Hermann Goering, who was famously quoted as saying, it makes me furious when I see the Mosquito. I turn green and yellow with envy. The British, who can afford aluminum better than we can, knock together a beautiful wooden aircraft that every piano factory over there is building, and they give it at a speed that which they have now increased yet again. What do you make of that? There is nothing the British do not have. They have the geniuses and we have the nincompoops. After the war is over, I'm going to buy a British radio set. At least then I'll own something that has always worked. 
Speaking of the war's end, Mosquitoes would continue to fly all the way until 1963 with the RAF, and similarly with Canada and Australia. They would only be replaced when the English Electric Canberra entered service. The production run would last from 1940 all the way to 1950 and end up with roughly 7,700 aircraft, of which 30 are on display, including E-0234 herself, and 4 that are still flying. It's no hyperbole to call the Mazie a wooden wonder, as it's very probably the holder of the title of Best Allied Twin Engine Aircraft of the Second World War. Even from a rocky start, to being mired in doubt, the Mosquito proved that de Havilland was the perfect company to step up and deliver on the idea.